Welcome everyone. Let's start uh, right in time. This welcome to PC working group session on Monday. Uh, I'm Dhruv. Uh, Julian is remote. Unfortunately, he can't make it, but we have our secretary, Hari, helping me out with the logistics. Thank you, Hari. Uh, note call. Uh, this is Monday. Some of you might be new to ITF. Please focus on this slide. It gives you information about how ITF works, what are our processes, what are our code of conduct, IPR policies, the way we behave with each other. Please go through it by attending this session and making contribution. You are agreeing to this note well. So please note it well. Uh, meeting tips. Uh, for people who are uh, remote, they must be on the Meet Echo full session. For people in the room, you have a Meet Echo Lite client that you can connect via your phone. You can use the QR code as well. Uh, please use Meet Echo to join the queue. Please don't come directly to the mic. Please join the queue so that we can be fair with both remote and in-person participants. Uh, uh, wear a mask. Uh, that's the policy that we all have agreed when we have registered to ITF. Please respect that. Please take the uh, only time where you take the mask off is while you are at the mic and you are speaking. Otherwise, please keep it on. For remote participants, please be uh, mindful of audio and video. Uh, please mute when you are not speaking and join the queue. Thank you. Uh, some resources where you will find the agenda since you are here. I assume that you know all this. You know how to reach agenda uh, and the meet echo and other information. But if you face any problem, these are the set of resources for you to reach out to. Again, a reminder for ITF guidelines for conduct. Please be nice to each other. This is a community uh, where we, uh, we tend to be uh, technically uh, give right comments, but at the same time, respect each other and towards the common goal of the internet we need to work in a nice manner both online in our mailing list as well as in the room while you are speaking at the mic please be respectful uh, we have minute taker thanks harry uh, meet echo remains the same uh, we have the chat which is integrated on meet echo or otherwise if you are on your phone you can also log into zulip uh, and look at the chat content there as well. The minutes, uh, Hari is leading, but anybody else is free to join. That's the link uh, for our notes page. It's also there in the Meet Echo. Please help. Uh, usual reminders, uh, please use the mailing list more actively. Uh, please be more vocal when we do working group last call adoptions. There's a lot of information that we put out in Wiki. Come and update. This is your documents, your working group not just for the chairs and the secretary to maintain, but for the whole working group. Uh, keep it up to date and nudge the chairs when they are missing something and the information is incorrect, for instance. Uh, if you have early code points, please, we have a process for early code point allocation. This is our usual reminder. Don't squat. Don't try to just use random numbers. We have a process. Please follow it. Uh, this is our agenda. Uh, we have segment routing, five presentations, stateful PC, and some others on TLS, DetNet, Beer, uh, as well. So pretty tight agenda. Uh, is there any agenda bashing last minute? Any changes? Hearing nothing, let's move ahead. Uh, let's start with the working group status. So since the last ITF, we have two RFCs. We have LSP extended flags and VN association. One document which has been in the RFC editor queue for a while, it's because of a misref to SRV6. Luckily, the SRV6 is in post working group last call phase, so we should be moving both those documents pretty soon, hopefully. There are two documents with our AD, uh, the GMPLS one and the, pro uh, the protection enforcement, uh, which uh, hopefully we will be sending to ISG review and bigger review soon. There have been no new errata. We have a liaison input, which is uh, a recurring item uh, for a bunch of working groups, PC, CCAMP uh, specifically. Please be aware of them. We have an early INA code point allocation. So these are the current uh, drafts. Some of the drafts are already in the working group last call or 
outside the working group. So that's pretty good. Uh, some of them have been renewed. So this will be the last time. And hopefully we will be able to get them to RFC publication before the expiry date. So that looks pretty okay. So we are pretty good. But uh, these are the things that we need to prioritize as we move documents out of our queue. So uh, uh, now uh, I will try to go through some of the key documents. Uh, uh, and I might skip the others, but if uh, working group participants have something to say, please come to the mic and use this time uh, if you have some information to share to the working group. For PSEP Yang, uh, I am uh, a co-author and Julian is leading this. Currently, it is waiting for chair go ahead. I did make an update around the deadline. There were comments from routing directorate re uh, related to support of some features. There were some comments from Tom Patch. There was a SEC di directorate review. And Yang Doctor, anyway, has been done in the past. Mostly all the comments from the author's point of view are ha handled. We are just waiting for chair's review and then sending it out uh, uh, to the RAD. If anybody has any concerns on this document, please uh, come. Otherwise, I'll move. OK. Uh, next is IPv6, SRV6. This is on the agenda. Uh, there are still technical comments that needs handling. Uh, I request the authors to make an update, maybe use this time in the meeting or outside the meeting to resolve this comment so that we can progress this document soon. Uh, we have a document uh, on native IP. This document uh, has not seen any recent change. It's remained stable. It's actually next in our working group last call queue. So after we are done with the Yang and this, this is the document that we will be sending. This has impacts on IDR, and this has been reviewed by I, uh, in the IDR mailing list. There were comments from Sue that were handled, but just uh, information to the working group that we will be moving this next. So if you have any concerns, Please raise it early. Don't just wait for the working group last call. You can get the process and handling comments smoother if, uh, uh, if you are aware of what chairs and the working group are planning with the next set of documents. FlexGrid document has mainly been refreshed. There's a lot of silence. There's not been any concerns, but there have not been any updates either. Uh, any input that the authors want to give to the working group, any information, use your time now or send a mail to the mailing list whatever you are comfortable with. Hearing nothing, let's move. Uh, this has been on my slides for multiple working group sessions. Uh, I, I remind the working group that we have not received a feedback on this, and it's still pending. Uh, it's like Julian and I, and maybe discussing with John, will take a call on this soon. I think next ITF we have to remove this and not <laughs> keep the same slide every time. So if you have any concerns, suggestions, think of this as your last uh, chance, and we will be deciding based on the feedback that we have, even though it might be incomplete in our opinion. Uh, SR path segment, a refresh, uh, has, has been done mostly as a refresh, not much of a technical change. There was a question asked that it documents to mechanism uh, the authors mentioned that in the list. There were no objection. So it looks like we are going ahead with uh, both the mechanisms. If you have any concerns, please uh, voice your opinion on the list. This document is nearing working group last call as well. So we wanted to give a heads up to, the uh, to our working group. Uh, Bidirectional path, again, mostly stable. Looks like nearing working group last call as well. Uh, the other documents, I think I would like to skip uh, in the interest of time. Uh, I'll just, this one the, is anyway on the agenda. The SR, SR one point I wanted to highlight is there is a major change with respect to moving things from one document into this, which is a router ID TLV uh, information, which was in an another document, which was not adopted. And since we want to progress this, uh, we, we thought it's better to move this TLV inside this document, which is a working group document, and hopefully we will be uh, pushing it out soon. So instead of maintaining a misref and, uh, and doing this is better, define the TLV here and let the other document uh, refer it. So that's the main change uh, in this document. Uh, Multipath, mostly a refresh, state sync, no change uh, recently, looks to be stable. If people have concerns, uh, 
please voice optional inter domain with inter domain uh, with optional basically again a refresh looks like to be pretty stable it's a very uh, simple extension uh, hopefully we should be moving this pretty soon next we have inter domain this has expired and it has expired for a while uh, i did send a nudge to the authors as well that it has been expired for a while what are your plans i have not heard anything back uh, this is again a reminder to authors please uh, update your document don't keep it expired for a long time and uh, also to the community i hope i have received comments from people about uh, this document so i hope there is interest uh, from the community but this is also your chance to uh, voice your opinion what do you think about this document and and also it has an open question related to enhanced errors which i was mentioning earlier whether this document should use the enhanced error extension defined by the uh, that document and i would like to uh, move ahead said algo is on the agenda author wants to get feedback before they update and that's fine but let's update this document as well hopefully after the this itf other documents are sub, some which are recently adopted uh let's give them time and we have an adoption poll queue which is in our wiki uh, we keep adding documents uh, when julian and i meet and discuss if you have any concerns if you want to talk about ordering if you feel some document needs to be processed earlier we are open to suggestion please reach out to us there were some good discussions uh, which i wanted to highlight one discussion was about uh, pc operational draft and the chairs have made the decision and given the guidance to author to break the document into two we are waiting for the authors to make an update once they do we will add that into the adoption queue and do our working group process as we agreed earlier uh, there were some questions related to a document uh, which is uh, uh, out of working group but it was resolved in the mailing list but I just wanted to give a heads up to the list as well and that's all from me uh, we have a wiki uh, where we do maintain some coordination activity with other working group again this is open please keep it update if you think some coordination is needed with other working groups let's maintain it here so that chairs uh, remember to handle this and we don't forget about this thank you any last comments otherwise we are doing well on time yes so far any other comments on working group documents okay let's go back to our agenda oh we have pavan joining the queue please go ahead pavan biram uh, juniper networks uh we haven't this is regarding the color draft the pc color draft we haven't requested early code point formally yet but i just thought i would put it out there for the record we will send an email out thank you samuel go ahead yep dude i just wanted to start with the presentation but if uh, if nobody else has any any other comments or any other questions so uh samuel i have given you slide control so you should be able to move the slides okay so hi all i'm samuel sider from cisco i'll be presenting draft about carrying sidalgo uh, in pset uh, on behalf of authors of the draft i presented it in the past already purpose of this presentation is to summarize content and discuss potential extension to the draft Uh, which, will, uh, which we would like to propose and uh, for which we would like to get feedback from working group. Some discussion already happened on the mailing list and also with smaller group of work, uh, work group members, but it seems that there are multiple opinions or there can be multiple opinions, so uh, it's better to get feedback at first. Um, at first, I'll discuss current state of the draft, uh, the problem which we are trying to solve and propose solution. So information about CDLG for each seat in the pod is available on PC or PCC side. For example, I'm from RGP or from BGPLS. 
are coming from an outer configuration, but there was no way to send it in PSET. SID algorithm uh, can be used as a constraint in path computation, but there was no way to encode it, and we are trying to cover all SID algorithms, uh, so all SID algorithms, which are currently defined in IDP. That means SPF, straight SPF, and for example. Uh, one of the main use cases of Flexalgo is also decreasing size of computer segment list and better ECMP usage, as there is better alignment between as a policy constraint and forwarding in IGP, so PC does not need to use the SNCC instead of them. So current version of the draft contains two parts. The first one is about encoding algorithm for each seat in the arrow object for SR and POS and uh, SRV seats by extending existing subobjects. Second part is about encoding of seed algorithm constraint, which can be used for filtering seats used in the path computation. Uh, and seed algorithm TLV contains L flag to relax that requirement and potentially call back to uh, seed with differ different algorithm if it is not possible to use SID with requested one. Even if specify algorithm constraint is for example, uh, the optimization metric type and constraints are defined in for example definition, uh, PC is not enforced to use them. Now to the actual problem, uh, and to describe the actual gap in current version of the draft, as mentioned before. Um, in case of for example six, IGP will forward traffic based on constraints and optimization metrics specified in for example definition, but PC may compute part which is not respecting them. As a result, a computed part may be unusable. One, one such example is described in this slide. Uh, we can consider as our policy with FlexAlgo 128 and optimization metric IGP, the FlexAlgo definition in all the routers in this simple topology has only affinity exclude parrot. So do slint, smart grid, red color. Uh, IGP metric of, uh, of links R1 to R2 and R2 to R4 is larger than links at the bottom. So shortest part for algo zero is R1, R2, R4. So the top one, but the flex algo 128 uh, part is R1, R3, R4. And for example, seed of R2 is really unreachable from R1. Uh, for, for the other part, because all the links to the node are marked with exclude affinity. But PC, which is not considering constraints from for example definition, can easily compute part uh, with seat of R2. Uh, if, if there are any questions to the problem definition, just just feel free to, to maybe uh, ask directly. Uh, now to the purple solution. So there are multiple possible solutions to this problem, but what, uh, here is what we are proposing. Uh, so we are proposing to consider constraints from for example definition in the path computation on PC side. For example, definition is already available in PC topology from IGP or from BGPLS, so no, no extension is needed in PC to use it. Uh, there is still a chance that some constraints will be received from for example definition and also from PCEP reports and from PCC, which can result in various conflicts. So what we are proposing is to ignore constraints from PCEP report in such case, of course, considering uh, other flags in PCEP object, like uh, P flag or I flag. If PC cannot satisfy all the constraints, then PC should be responded empty, yellow. Based on feedback received, it seems that original behavior described in the draft that only seed filtering was used is still needed. So we would like to introduce new flag in existing seed algorithm TLV to explicitly control which flex algorithm definition should be considered. Uh, whether flex algorithm definition should be considered or not. So uh, I would like to get feedback from the from the working group if anybody is against this, uh, if, if people are supporting this change, if if there are other opinions. So please please feel free to, to comment and it would be get, good to see if, if this is really supported change or, or there are other opinions.
I can go back either to the problem statement or to the proposed solution. And yes, uh, Samuel uh, Dhruv here. Uh, what I would suggest is maybe uh, we do this in two steps. Uh, maybe in the first step, we can ask the working group, does anybody has concerns with using Flex Algo as a possible way for us to use FAD as an already known set of constraints that should be applied uh, at the time of path computation? So instead of focusing first on how do we do it, let's just first make sure that as a working group, we agree that, yes, this is something that we want to do. And based on the input so far on the mailing list, it looks like, yes, most people did agree that, yes, this is something we wanted to do. This would be a chance for the working group if somebody has any concerns, mostly on whether we should do it or not. And then we can come up uh, with the proposed solution. So I see uh, people in the queue. Uh, Shofu, go ahead. Uh, Shofu, go ahead, please. So, uh, I just uh, unmute. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Uh, I think about the using the content of FAD for the path computation. Uh, uh, it is an alternate option compared to the existing options, such as uh, LCPA object, metric object, or the policy group. Uh, also, these options can achieve similar purpose for particle application. I think there is only one option that is most suitable. I think there are two main reasons that let us select the FAD for particle computation. The first one is the computation logic of FlexAgo may not be represented by the existing options because there may be subtle difference of the definitions between them. Uh, and the second one is we have noticed that about uh, to introduce algorithm ID as a constraint. Uh, it's simple and can represent a set of constraints, uh, not relied on the existing options. Thank you. That's my opinion. Uh, Shafu, would you mind also sending this to the list uh, so that it's clear uh, to the working group your feedback? Thank you. Uh, Stefan, uh, go ahead, please. Stefan Nikowski from Cisco. Uh, maybe just a comment regarding what you have said, because there is probably something that I have misunderstood in your, uh, uh, in what you said, Drew. Uh, in fact, when you ins when you start to insert or you take the decision to insert a flex algo seed in your uh, in your seed list, you cannot ignore the fad. There is no way you can ignore the FAD because the FAD will drive from an IGP point of view the, I will call it the segment, but it's not the right path. But the, uh, I would say the sub path uh, within your end to end path, uh, which is associated to this particular flex algo seed. So if you completely ignore the FAD, you have no way to ensure that actually the IGP will follow what you are expecting. So I, for me, it's even not a question. If you insert, if you decide to insert a flex algo seed, you need to be aware about the FAD and you, you need to take it into account. So I'm sorry if I'm understood because I thought that was optional. Like uh, here we are saying that by putting a flag, we are going to, otherwise it's just mandatory, but we don't need a flag. But even in the proposed solution, from what I understood from Samuel was that we want to make it as an option, whether you consider FAD plus give me a path only with this particular sits from this algo id is a use case that folks when the original proposal came was Which there is and true, is still even, valid even in this case you still have to consider the fad at, at some point o um, otherwise maybe maybe i misunderstand what you mean by consider fad like am i going to use this as a path constraints or not what do you mean by consider That's <laughs> I, I, I think it starts to be really implementation dependent mm -hmm. uh, but for interoperable implementation, we have to say, how do we handle this? And I was under the assumption that there will be two options, that either we will say that consider FAD or just give me a path uh, with SITs belonging to this algo ID. Yes. So, which is possible, but it, when you will insert that seed, 
you know that IGP will follow the FAD anyway. Yeah, so the, uh, my understanding is that there are really at least two use cases where one of them can be really, let's say, limited PC implementation, which is not considering FAT, but where the FAT does not have any specified metric type or any specified constraints. And in such case, you can do really the CIP field operation. So the yeah, but it's, yeah, it's a really limited use case. If you consider a FAT which has just IGP metric, you cannot really say that it's flex algo. It's just the best effort IGP routing. Yeah, so the, it, but uh, if you are going out of the IGP, you, you, need to conf you need to consider the FAD. Yeah. And it's it, not it, just it about really considering good. the FAD, it, it's also following the um, path computation logic that IGP is applying when computing flex algo, which means that, for, for instance, when you um, uh, when you extract your topology and you, you look at the attributes of your link, you have to use the attributes coming from ASLA because it's mandatory for FlexAlgo. Yeah, so th this was really about the simple case where the PC does not support full path completion with this considering part. So, so basically really limited use case, as you mentioned. Some, some limited use case to basically filter out topology and uh, to specify claims based on the scenario and not, not uh, the, uh, not considering constraints or metric types from the from the quadrilogue definition, but I agree that it is definitely small uh, smaller use case considering the, the extension which we are trying to to add. Uh, uh, I would uh, request other people in the queue if they have uh, keep their comments on this point specifically, because if we are not able to resolve this, there's no point actually uh, thinking of a proposed solution, and. Uh, uh, I would request the authors to sort of focus on this point first uh, before we jump into uh, the solution discussion. So, Andrew, uh, thoughts? So it's 3 a.m. Hopefully my thoughts make a little bit of sense here. Um, from my point of view, I see the usage of a FAD value as part of a constraint as being valuable. So, for example, let's say you've got a FAD defined in your network and it's got admin groups on it, right? Kind of like the example in the slides. To me, it makes sense to signal to PC, hey, please find me a path using all the special capabilities you have and all the knowledge you have, but I also want you to take into consideration, you know, FAD 129. Take that into constraints and take that into consideration. I think how that gets signaled or that intention, whether it's flags or whatever, uh, that obviously, like you said, is an independent thing, but I think the idea of leveraging the constraints that are already defined as part of a flex algo is kind of useful. So, thanks. Yeah, Andrew, a clarifying question. So, uh, yeah, I think usefulness is established. The idea is, is there still a use case for not considering FAD? That is, I just want to give me a path with which has sets of this algo ID. And I, at least when we adopted this work, that was the use case. And I want to uh, make sure that has anything changed since then? That's why I'm uh, confused by this a little bit. Gotcha. Uh, I'm not the, sure from the author's point of view. Um, you know, at the time when I was, you know, considering, does it make sense to say, please restrict SID selection to a specific FAD? And there have been use cases where we've, you know, we've seen ourselves, right, where PC wants to program SIDs, and maybe it doesn't necessarily care about why it's programming a certain SID. It just needs to reach a certain node or reach a certain hop. It's not so much about the T constraints on each individual link. So in the original uh, request for adoption, I was looking at it more like that, about, hey, I'm just filtering SID selection. Do reachability, ignore the underlying TE. And then yeah. now I see this as being one step further, which is invoke the underlying TE from the actual FAD definition and enforce that on your hop-by-hop -hop basis. Yeah, and then, and that's from my perspective, somebody reading the, the draft. Cool, thanks. Thanks, uh, Zephyr. Request you to be a little uh, shortened with your comments. We are running a little tight. OK, this is a for Francisco. Can you go one uh, slide back? I just want to uh, go back to the problem statement. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, if you look at this, it's very clear that there is, in the current draft, as, as is adopted and worked by the working group, there is an issue. And it's very clear on the problem statements. I think let's take that as the basis, and then we can discuss more on the middle list. Christian? 
Okay, Christian of the queue. I think let's move ahead. So I think my suggestion to uh, the authors would be let's break it down a little bit uh, and let's uh, let's work offline. Maybe uh, Stefan, you be uh, form a, a question to the working group and let's try to uh, get that feedback first. Uh, that is, what are the two sets of our requirements? Clearly, like let's focus only on the requirement first, and then we can. Uh, focus on the solution. The good thing is I did not hear anybody object to it, that FAD is not needed. And this whole, the new thing that we are bringing up is not needed. So that's pretty good. Uh, we are now debating about the previous requirement, in fact, whether that on its own makes sense or not. So hopefully we will be making good progress on this. That's my hope. Thanks. Okay, I think that that's it from from this presentation. So if nobody else has any any other comments, then then thank you, thank you for listening, and then thank you for all the comments. Thank you. Uh, could you stop sharing? I'm not able to. Ah, now I'm able to. Yeah, go ahead, Chen. Okay, cool. Thank you, everyone. So. Um, my presentation is about the PSAP extension for SRV6. As you know that we just finished the working group last call uh, a few weeks ago. So good news. Next, please, next. Oh yeah, this page shows the over, overview of the SRV6 protocol extensions. As you know that we have a lot of uh, basic features in SRV6, right? And we have published a lot of uh, RFCs, right? As you can see in this figure. So PSAP extension is nearly the last one. So good news is that we finally reached the working group last call point. So yes, good. So next. So the, the current situation of this draft is that the working group last call is closed, but we still have a lot of comments to be addressed, right? So we think uh, for the comments uh, from like uh, Chen Xiong, uh, Chong Feng Xie, uh, Adrian Farrell, Ketan, yep, and others. Many thanks for your comments and, and contributions. Yep, thank you, next. So yeah, based on the uh, comments, we make some uh, editorial uh, modification uh, between uh, the, the the revision 15 and and 16, right? So we uh, basically delete some redundant text. We recognize the text in introduction to make the uh, logic more like clear, and we delete the early allocation uh, things because it is not early anymore, right? Next. And by the way, we also added some uh, IANA allocation, allocation for seed verification errors because we find out that uh, we didn't have uh, we didn't have this part in the draft. So we align with S Ampere's. We're using the RSP error code in this draft, which has been uh, defined in draft chain PC S Ampere's seed verification. So we move that part from. Uh, the, the, the mentioned draft to this draft, so to avoid the uh, dependency. Yeah, we, I mean dependency here. So thank you, thank you for the uh, orders of that draft. And the next step is really easy because we have some uh, uh, maintained, uh, remained uh, comments. Uh, basically, they are functional comments from like Adrian and Katen. So we have to adjust them. So. I, we could like to hear wider discussion of this kind of uh, functional comments in the mailing list. So if you have any comments, go to the mailing list. Thank you. So yeah, the 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 goal is really simple. We 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 have to move the draft to the next stage as soon as possible. To, uh, thank you. That's all. Next. Yeah. Thank you for your long term support. Thank you. Cheng, uh, please use the face-to-face -face time if there is anything that we can do to yeah. resolve this comments. So Adrian yeah. is here, Ketan is here. Yeah, Ketan, I have mentioned your comments already. Yep, we can adjust them offline. Yep, no problem. Anyone else? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Cheng.
Mike, are you online? I don't. I don't see. You. Can you hear me? Oh yes, I can. Yeah. I think your name moved <laughs> forward, so I was like not able to find you. Yeah, go ahead. I'll give you the slide control as well. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Mike Goldeshev. I'm presenting this draft on behalf of the authors. So there's just some minor updates um, that I did. Uh, mostly editorial updates, and I added one uh, kind of statement uh, slash section about the use of the RSVP record route object with the SAR policy. So to give some background, the RRO is, a, is an optional object in RSVP TE. It basically travels in the path in the RSV messages. And it records kind of some additional uh, information about the midpoints. Uh, it records the IPs of the midpoints and the LSP labels at the midpoints. Uh, and it's used uh, typically when you enable FRR on the, on the tunnel because the FRR needs to know the LSP label at the merge point when it builds the, bi the bypass tunnels. And it's also used for uh, loose hop expansion at the midpoints. If you have uh, RCPT, LSP with a bunch of loose hops and you want to, and the head end wants to actually know how it expanded. So, um, so the thing is that the RO has no meaning in the SR policy architecture. Um, and I couldn't really find a way that, you know, you could really, map it into there. Uh, so I believe, uh, you know, I believe the statement should be kind of added to the draft that we should not use the RO object, at least for an SR policy. If, if, we, if we have an SR policy that follows the SR policy architecture, um, you know, unless and until we define exactly what the RO means in the SR policy, we should not signal it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully that's not too um, controversial uh, for people. But, uh, so other than that, the draft has been fairly stable and um, uh, we can discuss whether it's ready for work group last call. I tried to clean it up um, and to kind of uh, <coughs> remove some uh, redundant stuff from there. Uh, so... Hopefully it's close to ready for last call. Uh, that's it for my presentation. Uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike, can you go back to the previous slide? Yeah. So uh, to, uh, to the working group, I would uh, request like, let's, uh, there are two questions for me. First is whether, is this the document, the right place to document this? Especially because we have RFC 8664, which initially, without mentioning SR policy, did came up with how we would carry an SR path uh, in, uh, in PSEP and where the RRO is used because it's, we use the same messages, same objects, whether it is RSVPT or, uh, or SR. So RRO is an optional message in our report messages in this case. So whatever clarification that we do, one is that it should be outside of SR policy architecture. That would be one thing that comes up to my mind. And then we can also discuss validity of the statement, whether we should say should not be carried or this. So first is whether this is the right document. And then we can also discuss whether we agree with the suggestion which is there on the slide. So this will be the two questions that comes to my mind to anybody coming to the mic, uh, maybe frame your answers uh, based on these two questions, if possible, and any other comment is, of course, welcome. Pawan. Pawan Miram, Juniper Networks. I'm sorry I missed your questions, but let me <laughs> say what I wanted to say. <laughs> um, so should not seems a bit extreme. Uh, RRO typically is used to uh, convey the actual uh, record information, uh, actual path of the LSP. So if you have, a, if you have an LSP that's up and running uh, and locally controlled and you're trying to delegate it, uh, implementations typically tend to uh, pass in the currently installed path in an RRO. Uh, I mean, there are other means. I mean, you could add it as an inclusion and send it, but 
traditionally implementations that just always use the RRO for that. Uh, so, like, in, yeah. in, just to, uh, in the RCPT LSP, the RRO is completely optional. So you can have an RCPT tunnel that never uses an RRO, and it has an actual path. I understand. So if but if you if you define it as kind of the existing path, like if you use the RRO to signal the the current path, if you will, then that's not the correct uh, interpretation of the RRO. There are there are lots of T features that do depend on the RRO. So uh, implementations have traditionally used RRO, uh, even though it's uh, perceived to be optional. Uh, there are lots of functionalities that wouldn't work if you don't have. Well, for RRO example, in, in the RCP. Cisco implement, yeah, in the Cisco implementation, right? So you can have by default the RCPT LSP uh, doesn't use the RRO. So if I understand, but uh, I'm talking about just... implementations that are widely deployed. Uh, there are T functionalities that wouldn't work if there is no RRO for RCP. But this is not about RSP, yeah, right? But that, if you are going to, if that, you are adding, yeah. uh, Mike, uh, just let Pavan uh, complete and oh, then sorry, take ahead. over. Yeah. yeah. So the only point I'm trying to make is should not is a bit extreme. I mean, you, uh, may is fine. Adding a may in there is fine. Yeah, Mike, you sure. can respond. Uh, yeah, I just want to make. I just want to make sure we 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 understand that the RO is is optional. Like the RS, for example, in RSVPT, you can have a, a a perfectly fine LSP, right? That never uses the RRO at all, right? So I, I think it's already optional. Yeah, I'm not it's arguing optional. Either. So, so I'm not sure how you can say that the like you can that you communicate the current path of the LSP using the RRO. Because the RRO is itself optional. You cannot, uh, you know. About, about uh, I mean, about 95% of the deployments out there rely on the existence of RRO. I'm talking about RSVPT implementations for a certain uh, functionalities to work. I mean, the bypasses wouldn't work if yeah, you don't have an RRO. I'm not saying it's, right, it's okay? bad, though. So, like, so it, is, it is for, our, let's, I think, uh, whether it's useful in RSVP or not is not part of this debate, right? So even though it's optional in RSVP, uh, I would say an implementation is broken if it doesn't signal RRO, but let's leave it at that, right? For SR policies, uh, if you're like a, in the example I cited, if you have an LSP that's up and running uh, and locally controlled, and if you're trying to delegate that, uh, you would need to pass in the current path used for PC to take into account. You may argue that you could use IRO or something like that to pass in, but IRO again is not, it's not an ordered list. So there are implementations that do look at what the actual path is, and in certain cases try to prefer that actual path. Uh, so from SA policy point of view, uh, you'd still need, uh, I'm, the point I'm trying to make is still need a way to pass in the actual path of the LSP. Uh, you may have an implementation that wouldn't use it, that I'm fine with that. Saying should not seems extreme. Thanks. Uh, sure. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hello. This is Ka from Huawei. And I have a question about the RRO. Uh, uh, you, you see, you uh, remove the RRO from this draft. And uh, uh, I, uh, I see if the PC, uh, PC calculates the path and uh, uh, download the, uh, the path with ERO. And maybe the ERO is in the format of uh, the interface address or node address, and but not the uh, segment ID. Uh, in in this case, uh, the head head end of the SR policy may translate the uh, may translate the address to the segment ID. Uh, in this in such case, uh, the a uh, real pass uh, maybe uh, is different with the ERO. Uh, so in this case, how can we uh, report the real pass to, con uh, to controller? Or uh, is it a need to uh, update the ERO? Or, um, um, it's, enough to just, yeah. Yeah, it's enough to just use the ERO. Uh, you don't need another object with like a, you know, like a copy and paste kind of semantics as the ERO you just report back the same ERO, right? Uh, there's many kind of 
um, examples, I guess, in in the draft. So, like, you know, the the PC would send an ER, ERO, and then the the PC client, the PCC would respond with another ERO. Yeah, yeah. That would be breaking, uh, I feel, the existing RFCs. But uh, Adrian, do you want to comment? Hi, uh, Adrian Farrell. I, I have so many issues with this slide. Um, so firstly, obviously RRO has no meaning in the SR policy architecture because the SR policy architecture is not talking about signaling. However, there is a difference between the SR path that is initially imposed on a packet and the SR path that is actually traversed by that packet. Because there may be SID substitution, there may be SID expansion. Um, so there is a concept in the SR policy architecture of the actual path. Now, I appreciate there is currently possibly no way of conveying that information back to the uh, PCC in order that it could be reported on a PSET message. But that is orthogonal to whether or not the concept exists. And if it were possible to get that information back to the PCC, then surely the PCC would want to report that to the PCE. So that suggests to me that there is a value in RRO for SR. And then PCEP speakers should not send the RRO object for an SR policy. Well, should not embraces may. May requires that we specify what it means when it happens. If we're going to specify what it means when it happens, then maybe we wouldn't want should not. So I, I'm, I think you either need to go to must not or actually define what it means. And then cool. that all takes me to um, the, the thread that Dhruv and I had on the list about EROs and RROs. And uh, I don't want to block this work going forward, but I do think that the working group maybe needs to just take a little step sideways and talk about what we mean by EROs and RROs in PCEP, get that nailed down, and then we can push this forward much more quickly. Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's definitely a good uh, suggestion. We need, to, we need to think about what the RRO means in the SR uh, context. Um, but I, I feel that, you know, you, you should not signal, you should not say that the RRO is the actual path, right? Because, because um, I mean, by, by actual path, I mean like the current path of the LSP, right? Because, like I said, in the RCPT world, it's completely optional. So you can have the, you can have a perfectly fine LSP going without any RRO. That, so how are you supposed to signal the, current path of that LSP if it doesn't have the RO, right? So Mike, not... this argument is not really resonating, and I think it's now moved to a territory that we need to do this on the mailing list. So let's continue, yeah. and I would bring back that question as well, that do you want to progress this document? Do you want to... That's why I bring up that this discussion, do you want to block your document because you feel this discussion is important to you. I feel my personal opinion is this is beyond SR policy because we have RFC 8664. It's applicable to just SR path as well. And it's weird for us because in PCEP, we published an RFC before an SR policy architecture. Some people have only implement SR policy and that's fine. But at least from our standards point of view, we allow an SR path to exist in PCEP without SR policy. A combination that somebody could just send a PCEP message that give me a SID stack, doesn't give color, doesn't give the rest of the SR policy. This is something that we support. We can go and obsolete it if that's what the working group wants. But right now, till this exists, I think we have to respect this. So that's one opinion that I have. And I would like to get feedback from the group as well. But let's do that on the mailing list. OK, thanks.
Hi, Omar. Go ahead. Sure. Hi, my name is Huma Mitgoli, Nokia, and I'm going to present the point to multipoint SR policy uh, for the co-authors as well. Next slide, please. So just to give a little bit of update, uh, I think the main draft in the spring, which is their replication segment or the replication seed, uh, went, just went through a bunch of uh, uh, updates and the last call is gonna happen. And I think after that, I did forgot to put a slide that talks about all the other drafts that are gonna be following. Uh, but there are drafts in PIM, in uh, BES, in uh, PC, of course, and these drafts are gonna go forward from implementation point of view. So the main objective that I have uh, with this presentation is to give you guys a little bit of overview of what we are trying to do. And if there is any concern, if there is any comments, let's have this sooner than later. So when it comes to the implementation from the vendor perspective, uh, I guess there won't be too much of a hiccup. Uh, now, from high level point of view, when it comes to the point to multipoint policy, it's really a PCE solution. Um, you can configure, all the, configure these multicast trees via CLI, uh, but there is no uh, underlying IGP or BGP that actually signals the point to multipoint tree. So the PCE is the beast that we're gonna use for programming this replication segment. And also, um, if you will, calling the binding seat on the root so you can grab traffic and push it into this point to multipoint tunnel, uh, if you will. Um, now, when it comes for discovering the, the leaves throughout the network, we are not reinventing the wheel over there. There is already uh, RFC 6514 and 13 that talks about MVPN uh, procedures. We basically uh, use those procedures and uh, figure out where the leaves are where the root is, and on the root, we uh, send all that information via PCE to the, to the controller, and the controller com uh, computes the tree and downloads it via these procedures that I'm gonna talk about to the replication points. Uh, one thing that you gotta keep in mind is that because the PCE is doing all these procedures, uh, then the PCE can actually figure out that two replication points are disjoint meaning that the tree is disjoint and it's connected via a unicast SR domain, a unicast uh, segment routing domain, and then you can connect those two replication points via unicast, which is marrying the multicast with unicast. Uh, as of now, most of the multicast solutions out, out there is either ingress replication or whether it's a tree. Um, from this draft going forward, we feel that marrying unicast and multicast together would become very important, especially in the ISPs where they don't like to do multicast protocol. So maybe we can solve that solution uh, problem here too. Next slide, please. Now, from object perspective, obviously on the route, you need to have some kind of a binding seed or some kind of a tunnel. Uh, that can be presented on the root. So you can use that to push multicast stream into this tree. And we call that the point to multipoint policy. Uh, trying to keep it in line with the unicast, there is a bunch of candidate path with different preferences under the point to multipoint policy. And the candidate path with the highest preference obviously wins, becomes active. But if you ever want to optimize the candidate path from the root to the leaves, uh, there are what we call the path instances. Think of it as actual point to multipoint LSPs. These are the ones that are actually the forwarding state of the multicast belongs to these uh, path instances. And you can create multiple path instances under the candidate path and do global optimization. Now, that's one thing that is a little bit different with unicast. On the unicast side, you have candidate paths and there is no path instances. Uh, we just took it one layer of hierarchy below that and we created these path instances for the tree to do global optimization. As I said, each path instance is really a point to multipoint uh, LSP or, or a tree, I shouldn't call it LSP because it can work with SRV6 as well. It's a tree 
and each one of these trees are actually programmed on the data path via what we call a replication segment. So basically a replication segment is an incoming seed with a bunch of outgoing interfaces and the seeds that are gonna represent and identify the downstream replication uh, segment. Uh, one point I wanna bring up again, uh, as in you can see in this diagram, the two replication segments can be disjoined and be connected via unicast, which we feel is a very uh, important concept and powerful concept in, in this uh, uh, point to multipoint SR policy. Next slide. Uh, next. So now when it comes to the, uh, the objects on the PCE, um, we really created two type of object and this is where uh, the bolts and nuts comes in and we, we would like to get your opinions on it before we start the implementation. There is the point to multipoint policy itself. Uh, again, think of it as a binding seed or a, a policy that is identified on the root uh, that you can use to push the multicast stream into the tree. And then there's a replication segment object, which is really the multicast state on the replication nodes. Um, on the point to multipoint policy, obviously we try to reuse some of the stuff on the unicast, like the association list to uh, associate multiple candidate path with itself. We kind of update the, the LSP object and made it a point to multipoint LSP object. So that point to multipoint LSP object is really identified via the root and the tree ID. So each tree can be identified throughout the network uniquely with that point to multipoint LSP uh, uh, object. And we also added the instance ID, that path instance that you were seeing previously to it that you can identify the tree uniquely. Um, there's a bunch of endpoint lists that just uh, uh, like a debugging tool that you can figure out where the leaves are on, on, this, uh, on this tree. Uh, with regard to the replication segment, we did get some feedbacks back and we brought in the CCI object. Uh, so the CCI object is really identifying the cross connect, the, the multicast state itself. The incoming seed is part of the CCI object. Uh, so the incoming seed identifies the multicast state on the data path that is part of the CCI object and gets programmed. And on the outgoing interface, we are using the multipath for redundancy and resiliency, but really the next hops and the outgoing interfaces are presented via the ERO. So really, if you can think about it, and there are uh, packet, uh, there are PCE uh, examples in the draft, the CCI object is wrapping uh, multiple EROs uh, that are presenting the outgoing interfaces. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything else. That's the main two objects. So one other thing that I wanna uh, add is that on the root, you could really have the point to multipoint policy uh, downloaded with the replication segment object. So you can configure on the root your point to multipoint policy with the replication segment via a single message, just saving some PC messaging back and forth. Next slide, please. I think next slide is next step. Uh, one comment on this slide. I think I would request you to review the RBNF uh, from existing PCEP documents because some of the uh, terms here makes very little sense. What we call is as P2MP policy object. Looks like you are trying to define a new message. And I don't think so. You are trying to define a new PCEP message because of the common header on the top and the way that you have described that P2MP policy is a collection of SRP, uh, SRP object so it's not an object. P2MP policy, I don't think so, is an object. PCEP objects means a very particular thing in the context of PCEP. And the way this RBNF, we have always kept it backward compatible as well from our existing messages. So just pay a little bit of attention to an existing RBNF and existing RFCs sure. and make this a little clean up because right yeah. now it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> we are not trying to. Uh, uh, because it's not going to compile it. either. Like we can see the bunch of issues is uh, not going to compile. So we have to, and we have had faced issues in the past. People remember with our RBNF grammar. So we don't want to make more mistakes here. Uh, the learning curve on this <laughs> thing is a little bit steep, but all right. Message received. Uh, any comments? 
otherwise we are running a little tight and we'll move okay. to the next thank you thank you so last presentation in segment routing part of our agenda circuit style policy oh samuel you are yes go ahead <laughs> Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Samuel Sidero from Cisco again. Uh, I'll be presenting about, about uh, PCAB extensions uh, for circuit style on behalf of authors. Um, it was presented already in the past, so I'll just briefly describe current, current content. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the, the route is extending PCAP to satisfy requirements of connection-oriented transport services using segment routing policies, also called simple, also called simple style. As our policies, there is second route, which is part of the string working group, and which is describing concept of CS policies. Uh, this draft is extending PCAP to common information about uh, desired path persistency. That means PCC can specify in PCAP report uh, when path should and when it should not be recomputed by PC. Second piece of extension is introducing way to specify whether strict path is required for the OSP or loose path is acceptable as well. I'll just add to that we try to write a draft in generic way so it is not strictly tied to, to CS policy and uh, extension can be reused for any other use case as well. Next slide, please. You have control now. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, the draft introduced new, new TLV in LSP object for blocking path uh, recomputation to achieve path, path persistency and uh, minimize number of optimizations. If TLV is included, PC is not supposed to recompute path even if better not exists in the topology, but PC still can recompute uh, if uh, current OSP path was invalidated. It is still allowed to trigger path computation explicitly by operator on PC side. If P flag is set, then path should not, uh, should not be updated even if it is not valid anymore. And finally, F flag, so for fourth option to block all the computations, including any computation triggered by the operator explicitly. Now, second part of the draft is clarifying existing OFLEC uh, in RP object for segment routing in stateless messages. And it was originally defined only for RZPT, and it, uh, it is introducing similar flag for stateful uh, in OSP extended uh, flag TLV of OSP object. The flag can be uh, used to request state card or to indicate that loose part is acceptable. Uh, we also qualified what strict path means for strict uh, uh, in SR. So we try to define it in future for UPA, but we also explain how existing SIP types should be interpreted. So if strict path is requested, then computed path can have a SSS, but prefix SIPs are not allowed. And thanks for listening. Any comments, any questions are welcome. Uh, the draft is stable for some time with no major, no major changes. So I would like to ask for working group adoption. Thanks, Amul. Any comments? Any feedback from Spring Working Group that you would like to share? Mm. I don't think so. We, uh, if I remember correctly, there were no major updates to, to the draft in Spring working group. I can see that Zafar uh, want, wants to comment. One thing that I'd like to comment on uh, to the uh, working group here, PC, is that the uh, techniques used, although the draft is written with the context circuit star, but the construct is generic across uh, and the use case is generic. It's not tied up with the circuit style. So I think there is a disassociation between Spring and, and this because the use case is common uh, across. The use cases is for other use cases, like say for example, we did the BIDER work here. Uh, um, so this is similar to that. So it's, it goes beyond that. OK.
So let's move to the next presentation. So we are moving to stateful part of our agenda and with BFD. Uh, is Marina online? If you, uh, do I see her? Yes, hello, I'm here. Hi, Marina. Uh, we have Sasha here as well. So uh, anytime you want to jump in, go ahead. Hi, okay, uh, thank you. I'm presenting this work uh, on behalf of the authors, my colleagues, Marina and Orly. Uh, uh, is it better? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm presenting this dra draft on behalf of my colleagues, Marina and Orne. Uh, this draft actually is an, ex from my point of view, personal point of view, this draft augments the draft that has, the work group draft document that has already been uh, presented here uh, that allows uh, set up a candidate path for uh, segment routing policy using uh, PC and PSIP. Next, please. Uh, uh, the segment routing policies are comprised of multiple candidate paths and uh, the assumption is that the policy uses the candidate, the live candidate path with the highest preference or maybe multiple candidate paths with the highest preference and load balancing. In order to do that, uh, the head end of the policy has to understand which candidate paths are live or not. And one of the popular ways to achieve this is seamless BFD, which has been uh, standardized in uh, RFC 7880 and can be applied to uh, used with IPv4, IPv6, and MPLS pass. Uh, uh, specifically, a specific interest behind this draft was exactly as I said, provide to provide uh, the PCE with, uh, to, pr to provide the head on of the SR policy that is set up uh, with participation of PSIP to uh, enable seamless BFD on candidate paths to monitor their loudness. The document defines extensions to PSIP that are required to enable seamless BFD for this pass and to configure the, uh, the seamless BFD parameters. Uh, these extensions are applicable to all pass setup types, uh, applicable to seg segment routing paths that use segment routing on PLS or SRV6, and facilitate negotiation of uh, seamless BFD capabilities, enabling and disabling uh, seamless BFD on specific paths, and setting the parameters of specific sessions. Next, please. Uh, the extensions include uh, the uh, seamless BFD uh, capability TLV, which can be carried in the open object by the PSAP speaker uh, in an open message. So the, to indicate that the uh, PSAP speaker supports seamless BFD capability. Uh, here is the structure. Uh, the B flag is, uh, sets the, is set by the speaker that is capable. Uh, of seamless PFD and supports configuration uh, of this session via PSIP. Next, please. Another object, uh, the another uh, addition, new TLV can be carried in the LSP attributes object, which enables uh, or disables this specific uh, seamless BFD session for the specific LSP. Uh, and include using the B flag and carries additional optional sub TLVs which allow uh, configuration of uh, the necessary parameters of the session. 
Next, please. These sub-TLVs uh, allow uh, configuration of the minimum TX interval and multiplier, which is uh, detect multiplier, which define how the seamless BFD detects uh, failure of the path. And the, another one option allows to configure the remote uh, discriminator of the seamless BFD session. Next, please. Uh, the processing is quite usual. Uh, the peers must agree uh, that they're both capable of using seamless BFD, and then the PSAP speaker may send the uh, uh, LSP seamless BFD TLV towards the, the other peer to report the state to further configure the LSP or to enable or disable the session. Uh, PCC shall send it in the uh, PC report message. Uh, the PCE shall send it in the PC init or PC update message. Uh, when the B flag in this message is set to one, uh, then seamless BFD shall be uh, in activated for the specified LSP or active if it's a report. Next, please. Uh, there are several error conditions identified uh, with regard with usage of this mechanism. And uh, the authors uh, have defined uh, four new error values uh, to be uh, added to the corresponding piece of registry. Next, please. I think that's so elastic. OK. The authors, this is the zero zero revision. So the authors solicit feedback from the work group, and uh, we need, and then we'll proceed according to the comments received or lack of this. Uh, one point that I would like to add, which is not mentioned in the presentation, uh, there is a working implementation of this mechanism. Uh, we have, unfortunately, so far. We cannot actually uh, test, we have tried to test its interoperability. Well, the capability negotiation is performed. It fails for obvious reasons, but that's all, and that's it. Cool. Okay, uh, I have a, quest, uh, a question. Uh, for the uh, seamless BFD is uh, only used on the head end of the ISO policy. Uh, so I think uh, uh, it uh, may not need to uh, negotiate his, uh, negotiation the um, uh, BFD parameters or BFD information with the controller. And then uh, I think uh, we can reuse the associate, association object, uh, use, uh, we can configure the BFD parameters uh, on the uh, head and uh, use the associate object and then just uh, uh, list the uh, associate object ID in the PCIP uh, uh, message. So I, uh, because if we, uh, if we extend such parameters in PCIP, PCIP object, then there will be many, many parameters to extend and it will make the, uh, the uh, the uh, protocol very complex. And uh, in other protocols, such as BGP, uh, I, I defined a template uh, that, that, that is the same with the, the association object. And we can define a lot of, par a, lot of uh, a group of parameters in, in it, and we just need to extend the ID, the template ID or associated ID in the, ob uh, in the uh, protocol then this is uh, uh, maybe very simple. And uh, the controller does not uh, to know the uh, information of the uh, BFD parameter. And uh, uh, I think the controller just need uh, the uh, result of BFD. Uh, and the, uh, the state, we, we can use the state to give, to feedback to the controller. I think uh, just send this to the mailing list as well. I think let's take that discussion 
uh, on the mailing list. In fact, it was discussed. Uh, there were multiple options whether we do this with LSPA or define a new association. So maybe search on the archive list as well and maybe start the discussion there again on this point on how to uh, achieve this. Uh, Andrew, uh, can you be a little quick, please? Yep, uh, just a minor last comment. Uh, I really do quite like this work, primarily in the context of reporting state. I find the use case of actually informing the PC that there is BFD and it is enabled on an LSP is really quite useful. And from reading the draft, the TLV format, it, it read pretty clear and it seemed pretty straightforward to me. So uh, yeah, thanks for this work. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, also, uh, which other working groups, maybe John, you have any thoughts on it? Like uh, which other working groups we should notify about BFD, maybe sending to BFD as well as to MPLS or? Um, yeah, I mean, BFD itself seems like a no brainer. Um, MPLS, I hadn't really thought it through. Uh, I guess we can we can discuss it offline. It wouldn't hurt. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Jay, you are next. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jadon from Huawei. And I'm going to give a presentation on PCF extensions for network resource partition on behalf of my co-authors listed here. Okay, thank you. next slide. A little bit about the background. Uh, uh, a network resource partition, or call it NRP, is a subset of the network resources. For example, it can be buffer, queuing, or scheduling resources uh, in the Nenderley network. This concept has been introduced in the ITF network slice framework draft in TIS, and it can be used as the Enderley network constructs to support the network slice services. And for PC, PC protocol, uh, a PC controller may be requested to compute a T-pass within an NRP, and it may also provide a T-pass with NRP-specific information for the pass uh, instantiation or update. So in this document, we introduce uh, PSAP extensions to carry the NRP information in the PSAP messages so that we can use uh, it for the NRP specific uh, constraints and information needed in the past computation, uh, past update, past data report, and the past in in initiation. Okay, next please. So uh, here, uh, some information about the history of the documents. There used to be uh, two similar documents on this topic, uh, draft on and the draft shown. And as suggested by the working group chairs, uh, the authors of both documents had some discussion offline, and now we agree to uh, produce a merged document. So this is a current draft. Okay, next slide. So some more details about the PSAP extensions in this document. Uh, basically, we introduce a new NRPTLV in the RSPA object and this uh, format is shown in the figure. Uh, we have, it has a uh, NRP ID, which is 32-bit identifier, and the flux field uh, are reserved for future use. It also have some um, optional sub-TLVs to carry additional NRP-specific constraints or information for the future use cases. Uh, next slide, please. And we also introduce a new PSAP capability called NRP capability. It is uh, consists of the list of flags. Currently, uh, one bit is defined as the D, uh, D bit. Uh, when it is set by the PCC, it indicates that the PCC supports the encapsulation of the data plane NRP ID in the packet. And when it is set by the PCE, it introduced that uh, the PCE supports to provide a past competition result with the data play and RP ID. Okay, next slide. So uh, some more information about the procedure. Uh, it can provide an RP aware past competition. So in this case, an RP TLV should be carried in the uh, RSP object of the PC, PC request message to indicate an RP as a constraint for the past competition. And the following are the uh, detailed procedures, and I will not uh, go through the details uh, due to the time limit. And next slide, please. And it can be used for an RP specific pass update and the report. 
In this case, uh, it may be included in the PC update message to indicate an RP in which the TC uh, TE pass need to be updated. And uh, we also consider that the uh, error issues when there's an RP ID carried in the message, but it does not match with an RP ID of the existing TE pass. Uh, so this RSP state might be keep unchanged and uh, an RSP error code should be sent in the PC report message. Okay, next slide. And for the NRP specific pass initiation, uh, this NRP TLV should be carried in the PC initiated message and it depends on the D flag uh, value in the applicability. The PCC should use either the NRP specific resource aware seeds or the data plane NRP ID in the construction, in construction of the T pass. And there's also some error conditions uh, we considered in the, uh, in the draft. Okay, we, I will not uh, go to the details here. Next slide. So for the next steps, uh, we would like to solicit uh, feedbacks on the merged document. And the content, actually the content of the draft has been stable because uh, both drafts have been presented uh, several times uh, in the previous sessions. So here we would also like to ask whether this can be ready for the adoption. Thank you. Any comments? Uh, one simple suggestion would be like mark the uh, that this document replaces the other two documents. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like when you search for an RP, you get little too many documents. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. It'd be good to yeah. have a clarity which is the latest document. We may need your help to yeah. do that in the background. Sure. Thank you. So let's now move to the miscellaneous part. Uh, we start with uh, PCFS, update to PCFS, Sean. Hello. Um, hi, my name is Sean Turner. As you'll note, the name of the draft has changed as a result of a comment that we received um, actually in the NetConf working group where we're trying to progress a draft that is very similar to this. So next slide. Um, and this is the only slide, so hopefully it won't take too much time. Um, basically, we're trying to maintain alignment with a draft over in NetConf, which is basically how to describe how to do, um, was, was trying to figure out how to do NetConf over TLS 1.3, but in the working group last call, they were like, hey, that's great, but you know, what do we do with 1.2 and 1.3? So we decided to align with, um, RFC 9325, which is now a BCP, which basically tells you how to do that. So that's that's pretty much the big change that was going on in this draft. So the idea is that it says basically you find a do TLS 1.2 long as you do it as is specified in BCP 95. And if you support TLS 1.3, well, do TLS 1.3. Um, so it kind of provides a little, a little guidance there. Um, and so in terms of doing the updates, some things happen. Like, obviously, it needs a better title because it's not just um, the it's not just over TLS 1.3. It's actually recommendations for both. Um, so I just did updates for PCP PCEPS. Um, and then one of the other little nitnoid things is that the um, mandatory to implement cipher suites originally in TLS 1.3 would never get through the ISG now. So we updated them to be something that's slightly more. Um, robust and provides forward security. And the nice thing is that the, the, this selection of Cypher suites um, actually sets you up for TLS 1.3 because it uses the same construct. So it's kind of like forward thinking. Um, and we did a little work, we're working on the security considerations to be a little more prescriptive. Um, and I will tell you that uh, at the NetConf working group session that was right before this, there was basically no comments and they're looking to redo a working group last call just because we changed the name, and the, the title and the scope of it. But basically there was no comments against it. Um, really the only question for this draft basically is that we're kind of waiting for working group adoption. And the question is whether the priorities are right and they should be moved up to be quicker to align better with the Yang modules that are included. And I'll kind of leave that to the working group um, to decide. So um, willing to take comments. Um, I would like to try to see if we can maintain alignment with these, um, but I'm perfectly willing to take inputs and bash things around. Thanks, Adrian. Hey, Sean, it's Adrian. Um, this is great, and I hope the working group can just 
flip it through. Yeah, it's I, not like it's a million pages long. No, it's quite short, actually. It's, it's literally like, I think, six paragraphs, and most of them are like boilerplate. <laughs> right. Um, if I was a Precept implementer, and I wanted to run Precept over TLS 1.3, uh, could I just, you know, are there TLS 1.3 public stacks out there I can just absolutely grab you pick you pick a um a coding uh language that you would like and they are available oh fortran <laughs> 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 hopefully you're not doing it fortran but yeah it's publicly available it's used it's widely implemented um it's actually one of the reasons why it's so actively implemented is that uh you know, it's it's used with Quick and it's HTTP three and it's all the rage and so there's lots of people that are out there working on it. Now there's some question about OpenSSL and how long it will take to get in, that implemented, but there are multiple stacks that do support it, so you could actually get out and do it. You you'd have to know what you're doing, but hopefully, if you're doing if you're doing the programming at this level, then you kind of know what you're doing. So so all right. So what I heard was um, make it go faster. So I'll leave that to the chairs to discuss. Thank you. Uh, I'm one of the co-authors, so I will let uh, Julian take it. Maybe we'll discuss, but thanks for the feedback from the room. Just a reminder, this document came to PSEP because of a comment in the PSEP Yang document, and PSEP doc document is going to go to working group uh, last, it's already post working group last call, so we are just waiting for chair, go ahead. So I uh, prefer if we adopt this document when the document goes to ISG, so it looks like there's a better alignment within the working group on the progress that we are making with TLS 1.3. So that's my personal opinion with not the chair hat and I will let Julian take the call. Thank you. Julian, do you want to say something now or should we just do this offline? Uh, we can request a show of hands right now since we're at it. No? Yeah, sure. So people who are not logged in to uh, maybe use this time to log into the QR code while I frame the question, make sure that you're logged in so that you can also uh, use the tool. I'm going to just, should we move the working group adoption for this? Oh, oops. Oh, you did it. Thanks, Julian. So the poll is online. Yes. Uh, if people have trouble there, maybe you can raise the hand as well. Otherwise, we'll prefer it's one, one tool. That's always easier. The idea is to get uh, a first look at it. And in any case, we will resume the, the question on the mailing list, whatever happens. So. And if somebody has an objection and want to come and uh, state it in the mic, please feel free. All right, we see at least one do not raise hand. Okay. But that's completely fine. Thank you. And I'll yeah, let I, Julian take the call. Yeah. So to me, there is a clear support at this stage. So we will send the question on, on the mailing list. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. So next is beer. I think we made up quite a bit of time. So use your time and people have questions, okay. please feel free. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zan from JTE. Today I would like to do the couple, uh, do, do, do the practice about uh, PCEP extensions for BRT on behalf of all the co-authors. Next, please. Yes, this document specifies extensions to the PCEP that allow uh, state for PCE to compute and initiate the path for the PLTE. Next, please. Yeah, this is the extensions. So we just uh, to move to next slides. Yes, we have to do the practice in many times. We just list it. Yes, this is uh, the update. Um, based on the comments from the ITF meetings, uh, we add the reference to uh, FC 8623, 
and add the use case of objective uh, functions and uh, add the LSP object to identify uh, the BRT path. Next, please. Uh, this is the relationship with other PCE beer drafts. Uh, there are four drafts uh, related to PCE beers now. The first is uh, the one that we have, uh, we, we do the prioritization today. Uh, we just, uh, it specifies uh, the extension to PCEP uh, that allowed a PCE to compute an initial uh, path for the P BRTE. It uh, mainly fo focuses on the uh, path uh, calculation of BRTE, and the controller distribute a BRTE path to the BFIR. The second one is uh, focused on the central uh, controlled uh, scenario. It spec specifies a new mechanism where PCE allocates the BR information centrally and use PCEP to distribute them to all nodes. And the third one is PCEP controller BRT. Uh, it also focused on the central control, uh, uh, controller scenario, uh, and it uh, specifies a new mechanism where PCE allocated the BRT information centrally and use PCEP to distribute them to all nodes. And the last one is draft Lee PCE based PCE. It contains the extensions of the PCE beer. Next, please. And for uh, comments, we are uh, come and we would like to call for adoptions. Uh, you know, this draft we have do many uh, times, uh, do uh, prioritization many times, and it has it, it is the version ten. Uh, so we think it is very st stable to call for adoption. That's all, thank you. Any comments? Uh, any feedback from Beer Working Group that you would like to share? Uh, yes, we have uh, received some uh, uh, feedback from Juniper and uh, uh, and uh, he, he think it is uh, okay, and we should uh, add the PCEP extensions. Uh, sorry, uh, for the beer uh, extensions. Uh, but I, I have said the, our draft only focus on the P, uh, beer TE, and we will uh, rename, uh, change the name to re reflect it. Thanks. Thank you. I think I'll, be, I'll take an action item to maybe talk to beer chairs as well. And okay. thank you. Uh, this draft we also do the prioritization in the beer working group. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. you. So last presentation we have DeadNet. Um, okay, I'm Chen Shun from ZT. My presentation today is a PSAP extension for deadline band latency. Next slide, please. Uh, we are running a little short, so be very, very quick to the point. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Um, okay, uh, we mainly uh, introduced the updates from the last version. Uh, we uh, presented this draft at 114. And uh, thank you for uh, the comments from uh, the meeting and the mailing list uh, from the Doof and uh, Lou and Jalos. And uh, these are the updates from uh, NAS versions. Uh, first of all, we align with the uh, terminologies of the requirements draft, which uh, proposed the, the um, scaling that led requirements. And, and, and uh, we will uh, align with this work and this work is still going and uh, we also align with the the, the net common date field and uh, this work uh, is also we are be discussed in the data net and the design team and uh, we made some uh, clarification for uh, PSAP to uh, get the bandy latency capability uh, 
by the IGP extensions, and we changed the, the, uh, the extensions from the uh, ERO to the deterministic path object. And finally, we add the Rakesh for, as the uh, co-author uh, to collaborate with this work. Uh, last slide. Uh, okay, uh, uh, we uh, have the mainly uh, proposed the, the updates, and uh, we uh, we are aligned uh, with the uh, the, the uh, pros progress with the with the designing and the, the terminology and the QE information uh, from the dialect. Uh, we would like to get some feedback about the BSAP extension, uh, mainly uh, about the procedure about uh, in the uh, the that letter. Uh, uh, the, the processing. So, uh, comments and uh, suggestions are very welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. We have to take this in the next minute. Link. Sorry for or going over six minutes. Sorry for folks from the next working group, especially. So, let's use the mailing list. Take this very good meeting. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.